Suddenly, in big American cities, the homeless seem to be everywhere, and that's not your imagination. On any given night, more than a half a million people sleep outside in this country. It's enough people to fill Yankee Stadium ten times over. There are more homeless people in America right now than active duty troops in the U.S. Army. In fact, if the homeless had their own state, it would have as many people as Wyoming does. Over the last two years, even as the economy has grown, the homeless population has grown with it. In fact, outstripped its growth. Who are these people, these hundreds of thousands of people, and how did they get there, and why, and what are we doing about it? What is this, anyway? Well, the West Coast is the epicenter of the problem, and we sent our producer, Charles Cougar, on an eight-day journey there to seven states, in cities, rather, in three states. What he found was what you'd expect, but it was still shocking. Heroin addicts living along freeways in Seattle, a college town desperately trying to clear its sidewalks so people could walk. RV dwellers living next to the richest people in the world, tent cities in one of the poorest places in California where housing costs are zero. Huh? Across the West, we found places in America that are almost third world in their decay and disorganization and the chaos. Often we found homelessness and rampant drug use in places you would never expect to see them. This is a complicated problem. There's no obvious solution, at least no obvious one solution. One explanation you hear is that it's a mental health problem. And people say the government contributed to the crisis when it started discharging patients from mental hospitals and shutting those hospitals in the 1960s. And there's truth in that. Clearly, it's a factor. But it doesn't explain everything. Government estimates that just about 25% of our homeless population is severely mentally ill. And that seemed about right. We were struck by how many of the homeless we talked to were not mentally ill. Many were totally coherent. Some of them were witty, even. Another explanation is that sky-high housing prices in places like California force families out of their homes. And that can be a factor, too. But it's not the overall answer to the question what's going on, because we found in homelessness in places where the real estate market had collapsed, in places where apartment rentals go for just a few hundred bucks a month, where working class people can afford to live. So really, it's a question of drug addiction, alcoholism, financial problems, health care costs, housing costs and family dissolution. They're all part of the cause of homelessness. In fact, in every story we listen to, at least some of those factors played a role. But it's still confusing exactly what's going on. So to find out, we began in San Francisco, one of the richest places on Earth. San Francisco has more billionaires per capita than any city in the world. The reason? Well, nearby Silicon Valley. It's generated unprecedented wealth. There were several multi-billion dollar IPOs this year alone. But beneath this wealth is extreme inequality. The city of San Francisco has thousands of homeless people living on the sidewalks. If you've been there recently, you know that that's true. The city has a flourishing drug scene. Some of neighborhoods have open-air heroin markets in broad daylight. Cops do nothing about them. So despite its booming economy, San Francisco has lost its grip on its homeless problem and is struggling to provide basic services. Here's what we found when we went there. This was the scene outside our hotel in San Francisco. A homeless man, hungry for dinner, digging through a trash can for food. The epicenter of homelessness in San Francisco is the Tenderloin neighborhood. It's just blocks from tourist attractions like Union Square and major thoroughfares like Market Street. In the Tenderloin, we saw junkies shooting up in broad daylight and homeless people wielding makeshift knives. One threatened to stab our camera crew because we were filming there. In this video, a mother and daughter wait for a public bus standing just feet from a drug-addled man who's too intoxicated to put on his own coat. The city has about 470 intravenous drug users per square mile. One reason so many homeless congregate in the area is a place called Glide Memorial Church. Like the city around it, Glide is political and post-Christian. Back in the 60s, it removed its crosses to be more welcoming. This man was out cold on a sidewalk just blocks from the church. Next to him, a partially eaten birthday cake, syringes that the city passes out, and water packets that help addicts cook heroin on the street. How does a city this rich get so dirty? One reason, San Francisco no longer enforces quality of life citations, like sleeping on the sidewalk or public urination. The city used to use citations as leverage to get people off the streets. But in 2016, a liberal judge called Christopher Height flushed all 64,000 outstanding warrants for quality of life crimes, every one from 2011 to 2015. But it's not just quality of life crimes. San Francisco now finds it difficult to enforce any law. 
There you go, you just broke in. Smash and grab car thefts are everywhere, a huge problem in San Francisco, but cops make arrests in fewer than 2% of them. Police stationed in the Tenderloin complain that it's impossible to get convictions against drug dealers, so they don't even try to enforce the law. One officer told the San Francisco Chronicle that the police now allow criminals to operate, even when cops know who they are and what they're up to. One consequence of not enforcing those laws, rampant drug abuse well beyond the Tenderloin. We videotaped this man shooting up heroin right in front of City Hall in broad daylight. Here's a picture of two people shooting up at Mission Dolores Park. A three-bedroom row house right next to these junkies currently sells for $6 million. City officials are well aware of the problems San Francisco residents have reported. Feces and syringe complaints on nearly every block of the city. Former Mayor Mark Farrell told local media that even he had stepped on a used needle once at the Civic Center Plaza, right near downtown. But nothing's changing. Despite the reports and the money that San Francisco spends on cleaning its streets, we found syringes and human feces all over the city. San Francisco isn't the only city that's lost control, uh, not in the country and certainly not in California. Tomorrow we will take you to other parts of that state and what you see will shock you. It shocked us. Our Homeless in America series continues with new cities each night this week, so don't miss that.